Hi guys, it's me Lewis and today I'm here to talk about um, some interesting things that happened at E3 this year. Now, we're going to start off with the two big, big names. Unfortunately, it's not free because Nintendo didn't really show off much. Only showed off Zelda and that was it. So, it's going to be Microsoft and Sony. And, and also, and also, I almost forgot about this, um, some indie titles as well, which I'll, which, I'll get, which I'll get to later on. So, let's start off with Sony. Now, here's some interesting things. At the start of their press conference, they had like, had like this, this, um, this orchestra um, group pl uh, play, playing the trumpets, violins, the trombones, the drums, you know, etc. And they showed off quite, quite a few interesting games. Um, they showed off um, God of War 4, even, even, though, even though the title's just called God of War because they've, they've rebooted the series, which I couldn't really give a shit, I'm not going to call it God of War 4 anyway. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Um, however, God of War, God of War 4 really shocked me the most, because it showed, um, at the start of the game, it showed off, like, this kid, like, playing, playing with, like, a, I think, I think it was, like a, like, a giant statue of a god, and, like, a picture of, and also, like a, like, a little knight just, like, fighting each other and whatnot, then, um, then you hear, like, like, this deep voice saying, boy, come here now, and he walks in, and I thought, and, and I thought to myself, hang on, is, is this, is this Horizon Zero Dawn? And no, it wasn't. It was fucking Kratos. Kratos just comes out of the shadows with a full-length bushy beard, more more bigger than this. I'll tell you that. More more bigger than my fucking beard. And he's he's still the same old angry, pissed-off Kratos that we still know today. He's just, he's just got a beard, and that's just pretty much it. Um. So yeah, the gameplay they've definitely changed it. It's no longer it's no longer a um. It was it was like it was like a like a far away hack and slash uh, game. They've actually changed it into like a into a third person. Um, hack and slash, hack and slash game, which is absolutely fucking amazing because I, I, that that's not that's not I can easily live with. I'll tell you right now. Um, so yeah, Kratos was just was just um was, was like teaching his son. Yes, his, his son, which is like the little little kid with it with the bow and arrow and all that. Um, he was teaching his kid how, how to hunt a deer, uh, but they end up being uh, being attacked by uh, by these like skeleton by these undead skeletons, a giant fucking horn headed monster with a giant rock log on, on it on it on, on his shoulder like fucking hitting you with it and all that shit and it's it's just amazing to see god of war in this gen's graphics and it's just it's just stunning it's beautiful um but uh let's let's we got let's let's talk let's talk about uh let's talk about the most interesting fucking thing that i discovered right <laughs> fucking days gone now this was a game i when, when they showed the trailer I uh, I actually thought that this was um, that this was the Last of Us Two, just with just, just with different characters. No, this is this is like a whole different whole new different game. And fucking hell, this game looks good. And I'll tell you why. Um, you play as this bloke who's obviously in like in like a huge zombie ap in like this huge zombie apocalypse, right? Um, and you're like walking around this this giant like uh, like uh, like this giant uh, mine factory, um, and you. You like you're on top of this roof and you see like, like a giant fucking army of zombies just like just like roaming around like motherfuckers. Um, then you jump down. You uh, you uh, you pretty much like uh, you jump down and attack an old guy. Um, he breaks his leg. Zombies. Uh, the, the army of zombies fucking eat him. Um, the zombies chase you. Uh, they come out. They come out of like this fucking train um, carrier. And it's it 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 honest God, it references like two different things here. It references two two, two different things from, from this game. Um bes besides the Last of Us environments. Um it references um Day uh, not, not not Daisy, yeah. World War Z, which is a shit film by the way, and Left for Dead. So this looks really fucking good, I have to say, because it, it it's it's this this these these types of zombie games that I actually like. I love I love how zombies just, are, are not like the slow paced motherfuckers. I mean I mean I mean sometimes it can be great, sometimes it can't. It, it, it depends what, which depends how the gameplay is to be honest with you. But Days Gone, a game I'm most definitely playing a, a, along alongside with God of War Four. Now, now here comes the big one, the big one. This brings me back to my my PlayStation One childhood. This man, I, I, I can't remember his fucking name, right? Um, before, before, before he walked on stage, they were playing the Crash Bandicoot theme song, and my reaction was this. <gasps> I was literally 
freaking out like a motherfucker. And when he was walking out, it showed like a shadow of Crash Bandicoot. I'm not fucking joking yet. Then he announced that Sony are teaming up with Activision, which I'm kind of a bit concerned about, um, are remastering Crash Bandicoot 1, 2, and 3 for the PlayStation 4. This made me flip the fuck out. And fuck, and, and, and minus the fucking Skylanders version of, of Crash, you can fuck off with that shit. But, oh my god, man, I was literally flipping my fucking shit. But, since, since, uh, since, um, Activision, Activision still, well, they, they still sort of hold the rights to Crash Bandicoot. They, they now own 40% of it. Sony now owns, uh, 60% 60 of the rights to Crash Bandicoot. Um, so... As long, as long as Sony is telling Activision what to do, then maybe we don't have to be worried, unless, well, t well but at the same time, we should be concerned. Now, let's move on to, let's move on to, um, let's move on to Microsoft, shall we? Uh, Microsoft, they should, they should actually show quite, quite, quite a lot of good shit, besides, besides General Ram for, for Killer Instinct. Yes, I flipped my fucking shit when I saw that, and I... So happy that, that that leak was real. So, that made me so damn happy. And speaking of leaks, there was another leak for, De for Dead Rising 4. And then, and when the trailer showed up, which obviously it, it kept on zooming out, which is bullshit, because I had to, had to like, get really close to the fucking screen. And then it zoomed right, right to the full screen of the trailer again. And it said, hashtag Frank is back. Meaning that Frank West from Dead Rising 1 has returned after 10 Fucking years, and now you're thinking, well, what, what, what about what about Dead Rising, uh, Case West, and off the record, those were pretty much like like uh, like alternate versions of Dead Rising Two. Okay, they're not they're not actually officially canon. So you're back you're back in Willamette Mall, but now it's more open world. You can go you can go outside the world Willamette Mall. You can actually go in the city, uh, and just fucking just like destroy zombies with these crazy ass weapons that you create. And they were showing and in this trailer, um it's it it takes it takes place around around Christmas, which is absolutely fucking brilliant because killing zombies on Christmas is what I've always wanted. Celebrating that time of year with a fucking giant hammer, a chainsaw, a a, a candy cane crossbow, which was in that trailer by the way, and killing zombies on Christmas. Beautiful time of year. Absolutely love it. And and all, yeah, and um, and Frank West was, had, had like this fucking um, giant like uh, exo suit on that like, he was wearing, and he picked up like, like this giant fucking hammer, and he was like swinging bat every single fucking undead bastard with it. And um, it was just amazing, absolutely amazing. Um, to apologize for the for the um, <coughs> apologize. Um, <coughs> but I absolutely adored. That trailer so much because it's it's making me want to still love the Dead Rising series, even though even though I still think Capcom are still a bunch of fuck a bunch of fucking up twats like they did with Street Fighter Five and uh, and also Street Fighter Four. <clears throat> yes, I'm doing that reference again. Yes, same old reference. Um, <laughs> it's my last video. Um, but yeah, Dead yeah but yeah Dead Rising for some reason that's that's pretty much the last game that Capcom that Capcom can get right unfortunately. Because all, all, you, all you need to do is just come up with some crazy ass weapons, get get like a ton, like a huge army of zombies, and that's it. And that's it. Dead Rising is complete. Um, uh, also, um, also, um, <laughs> what what else did they show off? What else? Oh yeah, Gears of War four. Uh, obviously, yeah, that that came first after after, but well, yeah, before well, before or after. John. Right, it came first, and General Rams General General Rams trailer came second. I can't even fucking words out today. General Rams trailer came out second, and Gears of War and the Gears of War gameplay and the Gears of War gameplay trailer came out um, first. So when they're showing that off, obviously it's uh, they said something about about one of the about one of the characters' um, uh, mother being captured, and it I can I can tell without a doubt it's 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 that chick. It's a, it's it's the it's a new female character in Gears of War. I can tell without a doubt that's 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 Sam and Bird's uh, daughter. It's so obvious. Like uh, obviously, obviously, uh, obviously um, JD is is obviously uh, Marcus and Anya's son. Um, and yet they showed uh, and they showed Marcus Phoenix at the end at the end of the fucking uh, at the end of the fucking gameplay, where uh, where where JD uh, or or James as you might say, uh, opens the door, sees his dad sitting on, sitting on the chair, and he says, 
Welcome home, James. And he's back. And I'm like, holy shit. I'm, I'm hoping to God that the classic Gears of War characters from from Marcus to uh, to Bird uh, to Coltrane, possibly Anya, um, Sam. Um, oh, God, I, re I really do hope Colonel Hoffman's still still alive. Um, I really want those characters to be back. And I'm, I'm guessing there's going to be another Carmine in there, another Carmine um, character. We've, we've, already had, we've already had three of them. Two died and one lived. Um... But yeah, I'm I'm definitely looking forward to playing Gears of War 4, because me as a Gears as a Gears of War fan, truly playing that shit. Looks pretty damn good. Um oh, 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 and they also show off, show off like this catapult gun where you like stab your opponent in the back and you like shoot him in the eyes, that's pretty fucking funny. Um now now here comes quite a, a quite a big surprise for me. Um Tekken 7. Yes, when when the Bandai Namco logo came up and it showed uh, obviously Jin and Kazuya trying to punch each other in the face. I was like, yep, this is Tekken 7, and they showed uh, Akuma and Hihachi fighting each other, guest character versus the main, one, one of the main characters of the Tekken series, um, like, battling out, and I've, had to, I've actually watched, like, the actual proper trailer, uh, and they actually show off, like, like this, like this, uh, they actually mix, um, like, CG cutscenes with the actual gameplay, and it looks pretty damn similar to the, to the, uh, to the, um, to the, uh, uh, CG, to the CG uh, animation that they're using, except except for one problem, um, the um, the textures and details on the characters, however, look pretty damn shit. And I wouldn't be surprised to be honest with you, because it's obviously Namco, because they hardly really update the characters' uh, textures that much. Um, however, um, the gameplay I absolutely love because it it feels more, it looks more smoother and it looks more balanced. Um, I'm loving that a lot, and uh, two two of the characters are eh, not so great. The three of them, well, four of them, I might say, look pretty pretty damn good, inclu including Gigas, aka Craig Marduk. Um, now, the only problem I have with Tekken Seven is that wh where the fuck is Armor King? I've got King, I've got Yoshimitsu. I need Armor King. Come on, Namco, give me him. I need Armor King. Honestly. If Armor King's not going to be in there, I'm going to be very disappointed. And you don't like it when Uncle Lewis gets gets disappointed, now do you, Namco? No, you do not. Now, moving on to another interesting game, We Happy Few. Now, this game was announced back at uh, at Gamescom um, last year, and they, they didn't really show off that much. Except it was more, it was, it was like a mixture of like, it, well, I, I, no. We Happy Few is a mixture of Bioshock and all all like the creepy looking Tim Burton animated films. Like those those two types those two types of products slash franchises had a baby and bam there you go we happy few was born and it takes place around in the, in the 1960s of England where people are supposed to take like like these joy pills where it makes you hallucinate to think of like happy stuff like like pretty flowers unicorns um uh, people people kissing one another and whatnot but in reality it's pretty much just d like like pure, tons of fucked up shit and like. All this crazy, all this crazy, evil crap that's going on. It, it's bas it basically this game is like tribalism, where if you don't take your joy pill, you are against the tribe and you will be put to death. That's basically what this game is about. Um, so you're basically running for your fucking life, uh, trying to survive from any, any, any of the, 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 any of the fucking um, police, police, uh, well, cops, as you might say, um, in in around London. Uh, including including any snitches around who will dare try and snitch you if they find you if they're not if, if you're not fucking happy at all. Um, yeah, we happy few definitely gonna be playing that and um, yeah and, that, and also that one part in the gameplay trail where um, where you fucking hit that pinata and, and it's instead of like a, it, but it's not a fucking pinata you just kill the fucking rat and, and everyone else is fucking eating it except for you you're almost about to fucking throw up. Um, and and they, and they also showed off uh, Battlefield One, which uh, take that Call of Duty, rest in peace. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, pretty much. Um, now let's move on to some indie titles that I've been uh, been checking out recently. Now recently, I've just pre-ordered I've just pre-ordered Carmageddon, and it's coming out uh, this this week, so I'm definitely gonna be playing that. Um, so yeah, Carmageddon. If if you if you if you guys are, are diehard fans of Carmageddon. Go and go and pre-order Carmageddon Max Damage for the Xbox One and PS4 right now. That be that would be uh, that'll, that'll give stainless, stainless Games a lot of support. Um, however, this is one thing that I absolutely adore 
the most. This I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put all all like these trailers and gameplay links in the, in the description by the way if you want, if you guys want to go check it out. This one particular racing game, which I found which I found like two days ago, and it made me flip the fuck out with happiness. This game is called Red Out, and it's being developed by by a small indie company called uh, Thirty Four Big Things, which is kind of a weird name for a company. Um, but yeah, th this game is actually a spiritual successor to F Zero, Wipeout, and Star Wars Pod Racing. I'm not fucking joking, you. The reason why I'm saying, uh, the reason why it's a it's a spiritual success, a, a spiritual successor to Star Wars Pod Racing. Is that I think one or two of the one or two of the ships that you can race in look like the fucking pod racers from Star Wars, which looks fucking amazing. And you, oh Scott, the speed in that game is just, oh my god, futuristic orgasm. You have no idea, and it's it's kind of sad to be it's kind of sad to be honest because you don't get you don't get that many futuristic racing games like you, like we used to like back in the day. I mean I mean come on, we used to have like uh, like fucking. Uh, I mean, well, recently we had like recently we had um, Fast Racing Neo, which was back on the Wii U. But back in the day, we used to have like tons of it. We used to have like the F Zero series, the Wipeout series, um, Extreme G, um, oh, what, Hy Hypersonic, the Hypersonic series. Oh god, there's so fucking many. And, and Trick Style. If anyone remembers that game back on the Dreamcast, fucking Trick Style. That, that, that game. That game was a. Uh, that game was yeah, it was decent. It was pretty good. Um, but yeah, those games. Pretty damn good. And Red House and Formula Red House and Formula Fusion, by the way, which also is a game that's coming soon this year, which is created by the former, which is created by the former developers of Wipeout, by the way. So yeah, uh, that. Uh, so yeah, Formula Fusion and Red House, two futuristic racing games, I'm most definitely gonna be playing. It's gonna be quite a bit of a difficult, difficult decision for me to choose which which futuristic racing game is great this year. So that's gonna be quite a, a difficult decision for me. Um, <clears throat> what else? What else? What else? What else? What else? Hmm. What else did I find that I found interesting? Uh, oh yeah, Friday the 13th, the game. Now, they actually showed off actual gameplay. Now, just to let everyone know, the the gameplay in the, in the, in the description, which, which you are about to watch, if, if you do anyway, um, <clears throat> keep in mind that the gameplay is only early alpha um, gameplay. And this footage was recorded months ago. And I mean months ago. So this game is being being developed and published and supervised by two companies, Gun Media and Ilphonic. Um, Ilphonic, obviously, I know those guys because they're they're known for making um for making the reboot of Nexus, which I pretty much enjoyed. Um, but uh, they they also made the uh, Sonic Boom Rise of Lyric. Yes, I know. It, one of their they they actually admitted it was one of their biggest mistakes to to actually develop a fucking game like that. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't fucking blame them. Um, so yeah, Gun Media and Ilphonic are, are both teamed up to make uh, to make a one a, a one versus four survival horror game. So the one person is obviously Jason, which you can play as, and the four people um, is is of course the the what is it the um, counselors of Camp Crystal Lake, and I do believe and they have they have confirmed that the, that there will be different maps that will be uh, that will be uh, referencing well not nostalgia referencing. Two different different places and different uh, Friday the Thirteenth films. Um, so yeah, and they've, they've also confirmed the, the, they've, they've, they've also confirmed there will be different versions of Jason because obviously, obviously you have like like the you know the regular big tall uh, Jason. You had like, had like a zombified version of him. Um, there was one wasn't wasn't there one that wasn't there one that he wore like a trench coat and some shit like that. Um, so yeah, there's there's like different versions of Jason. They can pull like, different costumes for, for, for that guy. Um, there's different camp camp counselors you can play as. Um, so yeah, if you're if you're playing if you're playing as the camp council if you're playing as the camp counselor, you are pretty much fucked. To be honest, there's, there's literally no point fighting back. All you gotta do is run or hide. And if Jason finds you, bam, you're fucked. Um, so yeah, try and fight back if you can, but keep in mind Jason can't die. So yeah, if you play as Jason, happy days to you. If you're playing as the camp counselor. Fucking run. Um, uh, so what? All right. So moving on. Let's see what else. What else? I want to find one more thing. I'm trying to remember the top of my fucking head. Um. Hmm. What other game hasn't came out yet? Um. Oh yeah. Um. Recall. I forgot about that. I forgot to mention about that. Fucking recall. Um. Recall. Uh. I, sh I should have mentioned this. Uh. When I was talking about the Microsoft games. Um. Recall is um. 
it's it's pretty much an action adventure game where you where you actually uh, take out your uh, your robot's core and you attach it to someone else's. Um, so your your robot can be like a like well the core well, well yeah the robot's core can be a dog a gorilla. Um, I think there was a bird at the shelf. I'm trying to turn on the top of my head. Um, so yeah, you, it's 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 pretty much like, like that. It's, it's like a, it's like a hack and slash action adventure puzzle solving game. So actually, actually pretty good. I'm I'm, def, I'm definitely gonna get I'm definitely gonna get my hands on that game because the word recall pretty damn pretty damn unique. I, I do say if I do say so myself. Um, now let's move on some more well two more indie titles, um, Distance and Killing Floor Two. Now. Killing Floor 2, they I think they finally got a release date for that game. I'm, try, I'm trying to remember. Because um, they, they did say it is coming out this year, which, thank God. Uh, it's only coming out for the PS4 at the moment. It's, it's out now on Steam, but it's coming out on the PS4 pretty soon. But they have this, they have, they have, uh, they have been saying that they, are, that they do want to get it onto the Xbox One after the PS4's release. So happy days to that. I'm hoping, I'm hoping to do, I hope they do like a, like a, like a crossover. So you get players like Master Chief and Marcus Phoenix in Killing Floor Two. That'll be a fucking, that'll be fucking awesome. Um, what else? Um, what else? Oh yeah, Distance. Now Distance has been in development since 2012. So yeah, this game has been in development for quite a long time. Um, they still haven't. They still haven't announced a uh, a release date for um for the for the PS4 version of the game. It's not coming out to the Xbox One, unfortunately. But yeah, the the PS4 ver the PS4 version of Distance. They still haven't released that that game yet. And I really want to play because it it's, it it reminds me of Rush uh, Rush 2049, which is a game I I only played I only played like twice and that was it. I mean it, it, it was good, but I never got the chance to continue playing it because um, I was too, I was too busy playing other other games and shit like that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, d um, distance, which I'll which I'll, which I'll mention again. It's it's basically like Rust twenty forty nine, except it takes place in like a in like in like a Tron like style world, and your car can drive on walls, ceilings. Uh, it can fly. Uh, there will be online multiplayer, which they have mentioned. Um, and I re I honestly, all I can say is I just, just want to play it. That's all I want to do. Uh, just play the fucking just play the fucking game. Um, what a oh god oh you know what? There's, there's another Sony fucking t well a, a Marvel Sony title which I fucking forgot I do apologize um, I'm, 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 I'm definitely I'm definitely doing my tracks here I do apologize about that um, Spider Man they announced a, a, a fucking Spider Man game uh, that's coming to uh, to the PS4 and possibly the Xbox One um, and I'm so glad that that's that Marvel and Disney cancelled Disney Infinity because this means that Marvel can utilize their gaming IP so. Honestly, God, the, the the man who's behind all, all the Marvel games now, I keep forgetting his fucking name. He's been receiving f the top three most requested games to come back. Uh, well, well, two to come back and one to actually pro properly make. Well, I just want to say they from from us really. Marvel Marvel Ultimate Alliance three, Marvel vs. Capcom four, and a an act and a proper Marvel fighting game. Now. I don't, I don't fucking blame this guy. I mean, I mean, I, I do want a Marvel vs. Capcom four, but Mar but when I play Marvel vs. Capcom three, absolutely fucking horrendous that game was. It was just too intense for me. But Ultimate Alliance three, I want that because Ultimate Alliance one and two, holy shit, I want I those games were just oh my god, they were so good, and I really want. Ultimate Alliance free to happen, please Marvel, make it happen. Look, Spider-Man, this new Spider-Man game may be good because it's, it's being developed by Insomniac, the creators of Spyro, Ratchet and Clank, um, and Sunset Overdrive. I the, obviously yeah, this game is obviously going to be is obviously going to be awesome as shit, but I really, really want to play Marvel vs. Ultimate Alliance free. Please make that happen, Marvel. That would put a smile on my face, and. Please make an actual Marvel, Marvel uh, fighting game because Contest of Champions didn't do well for me. I'll tell you right now, didn't really do didn't really do that good for me. Even, even though it downloaded pretty fucking well, just wasn't that good for me. Um, <clears throat> and uh, and uh, yeah, I believe um, I believe I'm done here, guys. I believe that's all. That's all. That's all the that's all the uh, that's all the IPs I have to say about about the games that come out possibly this year and next year. Um, so yeah, um, don't forget to rate, comment, and subscribe, and tell me what games are you looking forward to seeing uh, at this year's well, well, uh, well this this year and next year, of course. And 
Pause my the cheesy free. Um, so yeah, <laughs> do apologize about that part. Uh, so yeah, uh, okay guys, see you around and peace out.